Hey everyone, so this week we're heading back to the Mac May mine and we're going to show you some of the footage that uh, we couldn't get on last week. Really interesting mine, you know, a whole bunch of levels. There's stolt floor passes, rotten ladders, and just really colorful mine. Really interesting mine to visit. Lots of rats. Uh, I'll give you some more pictures of rats. Um, but we're also going to go into the uh, the ball mill, which is a pretty interesting story about these uh, about how they uh, they got the the ore out of the out of uh, or the minerals out of the ore. Uh, in the old days, they, uh, they, everything went to the smelter. So um, all the ore was packed up, the, the kind of rich stuff that had a lot of uh, gold, silver, lead, zinc, or copper in it. They would uh, take by horse, train, whatever, and they would go to the smelter. And what they do is they just basically put it in a furnace and they, and they, and they get it hot. So metals, uh, they melt at different temperatures, you know, so uh, when it's ore, it's a liquid, or I'm sorry, it's a solid, and then they heat it up and it turns to liquid. So, um, you know, so if you have a bunch of rock that's mixed up, uh, you put heat to it and, uh, you know, say uh, aluminum or something, for instance, would melt at a real low temperature. So uh, I think aluminum melts at, I don't know, 1300 degrees Celsius, something like that. So yeah, 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 you heat this ore up to that and then uh, the aluminum all runs out. And then uh, the aluminum's all gone because it's all turned liquid and runs out. And then you heat it up to the next temperature, uh, you know, say, I don't know, copper or something else melts at another temperature and then turn it up and then that runs out. Then you turn it up and then, so that's the way you, you get the different types of ore and they separate it. And at the end, all you got left is, uh, you know, just the host rock or whatever and uh, you chuck that away. So that's what you see when you see these big piles at the, smel at the old smelters, big black piles. It's just whatever junk rock was left in there. And then plus the, the coal and, and the stuff from the process. So. What they did later on is they changed the way they did this. Um, it cost a lot of money to haul all this ore because uh, some of these mines, they only had like maybe 1% copper. So, uh, or, you know, so they kind of tried to high grade it, but you end up with a whole lot of junk to the smelter and it's pretty expensive to heat that much up. So they evolved different processes to try to concentrate that. So to try to get rid of more junk rock and, and haul richer uh, material to the smelter. So, um, and the most common one is, is uh, the ball mill. So this is what we're going to be showing you. And, and it's actually not really all that complicated. It's like uh, they take big steel balls and, uh, and they have something like a big cement mixer, right? So you stick your ore in there, all your rock and all that kind of stuff in there. And it's a big, great big, huge cement mixer, like more like a cement truck, right? And these big balls in there, and then they turn it around and it tumbles in there and it just makes a hell of a racket. But what it ends up doing is pulverizing all this rock because it's smashing into this ore that's going around there and all these balls are going around there. And it tumbles around for a while and then pretty soon there's nothing but powder. It's just, everything's just pulverized. So then it kind of goes through a pretty complicated process um, that I don't fully understand. There's a flotation and they use a bunch of chemicals and then they, um, some gold, uh, gold for instance, would uh, adhere to certain chemicals and they make a kind of foam out of it and skim it off. So I don't fully understand that part of it. I understand they pulverize it and then it goes through a whole process. There's a bunch of machines, different ways of doing that. So we'll show you the ball mill. Uh, it's not that old. It, like I say, back in the old days, the uh, um, when they had the smelters, the all the smelters all shut down about 1920. We had three smelters here: Greenwood, uh, the Boundary Falls, and uh, Grand Forks. The Grand Forks smelter here was the largest smelter in the British, or the second largest smelter in the British Commonwealth at the time. So it was a huge smelter. So um, yeah. So after that, when they shut down the 20s, all the mines are still operating. After that, they started concentrating various technologies to concentrate this material, so um, they didn't have to haul so much to the smelters. A lot of ore now even goes offshore to uh, Japan, China, all, all different places. We still have one trail, one uh, smelter left in trail. That's the only one in BC that I know of, So, but it used to be all over. So, so anyway, so yeah, we'll show you the ball mill, uh, more interesting stuff on the ground, and uh, stay tuned.
So the mills at your very left there, this is just a kind of a quick shot of the mine from the very bottom. That's where the lowest at it, and then we're just going to kind of pan up and to the highest at it. So uh, that's where the basically the main part of the mine is and the big deep holes and everything in between them too. So this is the mill here. It's a 100 ton a day mill, I guess, what I, what I heard. So I would think, uh, you know, it says 1983. Um, I think uh, that would probably be about uh, right. I think I uh, probably maybe operated about 40 years ago. These are the mining balls they use to, uh, they just put it in like a big washing machine, like a, a tumbler and it just goes around and around. There's the big washing machine there. And it's got those balls in it and I guess it just grinds up um, the rock and they kind of make it into a powder and then uh, it's kind of a process where they uh, put a flotation, usually I think they use flotation, uh, they put some chemicals in it and it uh, floats the gold, the gold uh, kind of uh, adheres to the foam and then they skim the foam off so you now this is all part of that process. So, so this is a process that they kind of adopted more recently uh, rather than smelting, uh, putting everything in the smelter so save quite a bit of money so they just haul uh, concentrate out of here rather than having to haul all the ore, which is pretty expensive, I guess, with the trucking and stuff. So some pretty interesting uh, machines here. That looks like sort of a lime or something, or a mud of some type. And so for what, I don't really understand that much about the process, but uh, yeah, basically they just grind the, grind the rock up and then uh, they skim and make turn it into a kind of a foam. And the, uh, Minerals, they uh, adhere to the foam, then they skim them off, and then uh, they reprocess the minerals somehow. So, probably a simplified explanation, but that's the best I can do. <laughs> Interesting looking old machines, though. Well, it must cost them a few bucks to set this up, eh? Because, you know, they run three phase power all the way up into here. And Put these buildings up, and there's an Atco trailer camp. So it's all uh, all a ban. It's kind of funny. They say you know there's a hundred ton uh, a day mill or something included with the sale of this mine. It's kind of a joke, eh? Because <laughs> I mean, what what value is this? Eh? I mean, what what could you possibly you know use this to uh, you know process anything? I mean, this is just junk, eh? It's, uh, as far as I can tell, anyway, it looks like junk to me. Interesting junk, but uh, certainly not going to be any kind of a an asset if you're trying to set up a mill and process <laughs> process any kind of minerals. Um, there are other mills quite a bit different than this. <laughs> so interesting visiting these old places, though, eh? You know, Probably all be demolished someday, so we get a salvage contract. And there's a big old bowl gear, that's a big bowl gear, eh? That's what the rear end of a big truck or something would look like. And that's running that skimmer, I think. Skims the, that foam off, what I understand. So, this is the head end here. <clears throat> Where the where the ore comes into the mill, and the big hopper there. So there it goes. Just comes into that big hopper, and there's the ore, and it screams down into there, and then we'll go into that big uh, big tumbler there with the rocks, turn into a fine powder. And then they skim the stuff off there. And that's the process as I understand it anyways. So this has been the first stage here. This is a grizzly, so they would just dump all the, uh, the mine cars would just dump all the ore right into here. So any rocks that were bigger than the, the distance between them bars, they would have stayed on top and then they just picked them off, eh? So, uh, you know, they probably didn't, uh, I don't know if they would have reground them or what, but um, they would just kind of plug things up. So. The first stage was basically to get rid of those uh, bigger rocks there. And then uh, they obviously they had conveyors here because uh, you can see this uh, conveyor system they have here. 
Um, so they would have uh, put the oar in there and it would have ran along this conveyor system. And it would have went to this uh, next station here. And then they would have probably had, uh, yeah, I really don't know how that, how that worked. Um, that's some kind of a crusher, I guess. And um, they probably had an aerial conveyor that went over to that hopper there, and that's the mill there. So I think we found the main adit here on the, the Mini Mac mine. Looks like there's a, I think it goes in here by the looks of things. Can't really tell for sure. Looks like a collapsed portal here to me. We can get in here, yeah. It's just because there's so much material that uh, was dumped over the bank here. I think this is the main part of the mine here. So I'm gonna go for a little tour up there. It doesn't look too hazardous. Not very steep there, so even if the ladder failed or something, I mean, you're not gonna come sliding down. That's not a very steep shaft at all. I mean, the dog could almost make it up there, but lots of air coming down. You'll make it. Yeah, I can't see what I'm looking at there. There we go. Getting back will be another story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I just put that up there and got up there. With two people, it's easy though, because one person could just kind of. Yeah. Easier with two people. Look at this fancy uh, little brace here, eh? <laughs> real, real, real work of art. Yeah. There, again, some more, more interesting looking. Oh, yeah, look at I didn't see that before. Look at that straight up there. There's another level up there. Yeah. Huh. So I've been down. That's an ore shoot, eh? You don't want to be going down there. Not without a rope, anyways. Yeah. There's no reason to go down there. Really. Easier to go down the softer way. The easier, softer way. I won't get too far ahead of you, so you don't get hit by a rock. So just another beautiful day in the boundary. Actually, it's about 35 degrees, so it's pretty bloody hot. And uh, I don't have a dog with us today because he got uh, skunk in our yard last night and he decided he had to go play with him. So I really didn't really want him in my pickup. <laughs> We're heading an internet into the intermediate access here on the Mini Mac. The Mini Mac mine. And we'll see what's in here. I wouldn't have noticed this one. Well, there's, I wouldn't have noticed this mine if it hadn't been for the airplane. Here we have uh, some adits that we're going to check out, and uh, there's the railway tracks here. There's the uh, door pile down there. So I guess they would have used uh, use this here to load cars. Just back right up in here and dump the the ore into some mine cars. So uh, I'm not sure which adit this is, but uh, it belongs to Golden Dawn Minerals. The landowner told us that these, uh, there's a landowner guy by the name of Volts that has some land below the mines and he says the mines are on crown land so I'm assuming this is crown land. We went in from the back and didn't see any signs or anything saying no trespassing or private so so there we go. So another hot day today and uh, we're heading into this mine here to have a look here see some railroad tracks going in. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good mine so far. A little bit of water for the dog, he'd be happy about that. There's uh, those lines there for air compressor. Not that big of air compressor lines. That would run the drills in here. Two lines, I'm not sure why there's two. Maybe. Interesting to know which uh, adit this actually is. There's a number of adits that uh, Golden Dawn Minerals has in the area here. Yeah. The flow stone there. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to continue on up here. Looks like there's quite a bit of waste rock at the, at the entrance to the mine. Oh. Well, we'll follow our right hand rule. We'll follow this. Looks like that uh, collapse might have been more recent. Pretty substantial uh, workings here, got in fairways. And almost testing everything. That's calcium carbonite, not quartz. We just had a bit of a slip out area here. A lot of little mines in this area. We're very close to where the smelter was at Boundary Falls. It, uh, one of the smaller smelters in the area. Didn't last so very long. But it's right at the bottom of the hill here, so pretty convenient location for a smelter. Okay. I would suspect there might be a shaft or something because at the very top there, there was a um, little area that went down. It was all kind of covered in bush. But it's not likely it went very far because uh, I didn't see any, uh, you know, it was, it was quite a steep angle going down. Oh, Max. So it's not likely that it traveled too far. So that's it. 209 feet in. I didn't go in too far. I don't think anyone got too rich on this. There's a real little cool band of galena in here you can see. Which is silver and lead. We're going to chip some of it out for a little sample here. It just looks really cool. Small little band of it. Okay, so this is what this stuff, we we pan that rock up there, and this is what it looks like. You can kind of see the, the shiny, you know, it doesn't really look that spectacular. Um, you can see the kind of shiny stuff on the on the quartz, and it's not as shiny as it looks in the mine, but I have no idea what kind of mineral that was. We tried to pan it out, but it's not really heavy, so I uh, really don't know what it was. You know, we kind of thought maybe it was a lead and silver with some gold maybe in it, but I don't think there's any of that in there. I have no idea what it really is. Uh, but I never heard of anyone trying to pan silver, so that that's what it looked like after we kind of cleaned it up and it doesn't look that spectacular um, as it does in the mine, eh? But uh, I don't know what kind of mineral that is, but pretty interesting looking all the same. You know, this is a level that Max kind of jumped down or fell down, I don't know. It wasn't that much harder. Too hard for him to get back up. There's another area I could have went down. Some really good salt and ladders here, but the problem is that the dog can't climb ladders. So, oh, that's probably where that ladder came right there. Yeah. Oh, lots of interesting levels in this mine. Really cool. This is just a. Uh, I can see it's be easy to get kind of confused in here as to where you are, but you know, basically the you're gonna find your way out, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't want to come down there, anyways. I was standing up the top there. I wouldn't want to be the way I'd want to come down. A kind of a this is a really cool mine as far as these ladders and stuff go, because there's levels going up and down, but it kind of limited a little bit. And this has really been the only case that's really happened is with the dog here. Uh, you know, there's good solid ladders. I can't really climb them because I don't want to leave them behind. Quite a bit of air moving through here, and I see some tracks. So, well, this is a, certainly an interesting mine to explore. 
<laughs> look, at, look at the rust on them. And I'm wishing I had my rubber boots today, but... That's okay. Yeah, many levels to this mine, just up and down. Well, I wonder if all these levels in, these, in this mine are connected. Oh, that's interesting, eh? Really chase these zones of mineralization in here. And you wonder what there'd be left in here to mine. Looks like there's lots of interesting stuff in here, but it's gone now. <laughs> oh, it looks kind of like a, a drum or something of some sort. Could be an air dryer, I guess, from an air compressor. Oh, lots of levels going down. Be careful to go down too far. Oh, so this is called a, what do they call that? It goes off to the side. Ooh. <laughs> a lot of different types of rock in here. It goes from gray material to pyrites, and quartz, carbonate. Ooh, you be careful of those rotted floors, eh? Definitely hazard in this mine when there's so many places it goes down like that. Hmm. So I'm guessing that all these stopes and stuff, these ore chutes are eventually going to lead us to that bottom entrance. The last time I was here, that door was locked. So you can tell it's going to be a long cold winter because look how much the rats got. Uh, it got stored up for the winter. The uh, farmer's almanac is calling for uh, a really snowy, cold winter here. Oh yeah. It was streeted yesterday. That bed looks like it's still warm. <laughs> so we're just inside the, the attic that we came in. And uh, we went to the right and explored that all the way down. We made it back down to the, the main entrance of the mine. And then it was locked, so we came back. And so now we're going to carry on here. Let's see what else. Oh. So we made it all the way back. And uh, we've already been kind of down there. So we're going to continue on in this level. And I'm not really planning on going up or down too much here. We'll just kind of move along here. Come on, Max. There seems to be so many branches and stuff that... We'll have lots to explore, but just staying on one level, so obviously that big rock fell down from there. It's fascinating uh, geography in here. Um, well, the one thing about this mine is it uh, did mine for a bit of lead, too, so I you know, don't know if that's lead. I know it's kind of a dull gray color. It seems likely that it could be. Now, this looks like lead to me, but I don't know. I'm not a geologist. Yeah, that uh, looks a little sketchy there, huh? Looks like it's ready to fall down too, so maybe we'll just move along here before it does, huh? I don't think a hard hat would help much of that. Oh, no. <laughs> well, as long as you don't touch anything, it hasn't fallen down in 120 years. Wouldn't be any reason why it would just decide to fall for no reason when you were walking by. Or not likely, anyhow. Unless your luck was really bad. Okay, so now we shall continue along the left branch. So. Huh. There's rats in there, see? Watch that rat. Watch that rat. <laughs> there he is, Max. Not very good at finding rats, are you? Come on, Max, come. Can you see him? There's a rat. There's a rat. 
Frank, they don't really care for rats much. They get more used to them. The more spent in these mines, because you see them just about every day, it seems. So there's the bat right there. We don't see many bats in the summertime. It's kind of cool to see them. So, don't want to bug them too much. Oh. Cool little uh, mine here. Got a couple of uh, raises here. And how far this one goes is pretty stinky in here, so lots of rats in here, but nothing new about that. This has got to be the rat capital of this mine. There. Rats coming after me and charging me. And, well, there's a rat right there, see? Didn't I say this is a rat king, this mine? Hey, buddy. Let's see if we can get a picture of him. <laughs> is he shy? Hey, little guy. Yeah, this is like the rat king mine. That's a pretty small rat. That'd be just like a little baby, eh? So, look how good them guys can climb. Just amazing. Amazing how agile those rats are. Hey, little guy.